空間なんなのよし静かにあんまり騒ぐとこしなさいお兄ちゃんうるさおWell, when the guys at the top win, that doesn't get them promoted. Yokozuna don't go anywhere, Ozeki have very different promotion and demotion rules, and while Sekiwake can be demoted normally, Ozeki promotion is its own separate thing. But the people who lose to those guys are mostly at ranks who do move according to wins and losses. So those losses drag them down, but the wins for the guys at the top don't matter, and thus we get our term unused promotion ranks. There's more that goes into it than just what happens with the guys at the top, but we'll get into how the whole formula works. The reason I haven't brought it up recently is that this is a series about predicting where people will land on the Banzuke, and this stat doesn't directly help with that. However, unused promotion ranks roughly counts up how many gaps in the Banzuke will need to be filled by over promoting winning wrestlers or under demoting losing ones. As such, it can tell us when we're looking at an outlier of a Basho, and therefore when we should potentially expect the kind of moves we rarely, if ever, see. This is especially useful for people who research the way Banzuke movements have been done historically, because it helps point to instances where they're more likely to have to think outside the box. Alright, let's get into how this works. Here we have the records from last Basho. So, we're gonna start, like I said, with how many wins we have at the top that don't actually add to anyone's promotion. So up here we've got t e r a n o f u j i he was 13-2, so he gets a plus 11. Kirishima, 11-4, plus 7. Hoshoryu, we do not count Kyujo losses for guys at this rank. The Kyujo, nobody won, so nobody benefited from the loss, but their losses don't impact whether or not they move or how far they move if they get demoted, so we just ignore those. So Hoshoryu is going to be a plus 6, and Takakesho is just going to be 0. Kota Nawaka and Aisho both had winning records at Sekiwake, but those winning records themselves don't make them go up. So Kota Nawaka gets a plus 11 for 13 and 2, and Aisho gets a plus 3. Then we look further down. Is there anyone who has more promotion ranks than ranks they can actually go up? And there we have Wakamoto Haru. So he was 10 and 5, so he has 5 promotion ranks, but he can go up 2 ranks, so we take those two away. That leaves three, so there's three promotion ranks he can't use. We add all that together. We've got 11 plus 7 plus 11 plus 6 plus 3 plus 3. And that gives us a total of 41. Next, we look at Kyujo losses in the ranks that will actually be impacted by those losses. So, what we're looking for is, for example, Takiyasu. His nine Kyujo losses will drag him down, but nobody wins when he takes a Kyujo loss, so he's gonna drop without anybody going up in his place. This will just create more gaps. Kyujo losses create gaps. That's just the thing to keep in mind. So for Takiyasu, that adds another nine. For Hokuto Fuji, it adds another six. For Asano Yama, it adds three. Hoku Seiho is a little bit different. Once you get further down, it makes the math easier to bump guys down by the number of ranks they would have lost just based on their regular record. So he was 2 and 4 with his regular record, so we take him down to M10. Now, how many ranks does it take to get him out of the division? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 eighth rank will drop him to Jurio 1. So even though he has 9 Kyujo losses, since Eight of them are all that are needed to get him out of the division, he's plus eight. Similarly, since Aoyama was 0 7, and that's going to drop him out of the division by itself, he has a bunch of Kyujo losses, but we don't count him. That gives us 9 plus 6 plus 3 plus 8 for a total of 
26. We add the 41 to the 26, and we are at 67. I haven't talked about what other Bashos have done. I'm just gonna say at the moment that this is a very high number right now, but there are things we have to subtract. The main thing we take away from this number are unused demotion ranks. So if the guys at the top can't use all of their promotion ranks, relative to this division, we will take away losses that guys don't need once they're mathematically taken out of Makauchi. So Aoyama, he only has to drop a half a rank to get out of the division, but he was 0-7, so he's minus 6.5 because six and a half of those ranks, of those demotion ranks, are not used to move him through this division. We're only paying attention to this division. Bushozan has seven demotion ranks, and he has to drop one and a half ranks to get out of the division, so he's going to be minus 5.5. Endo, spoiler alert, Endo should probably stay in the division. He'll get saved but it takes four and a half ranks for him to get out, and he had five demotion ranks, so he's just a minus 0.5. On the other side, Tomokaze has five demotion ranks, but one, two, three to get out, so he's gonna be minus two, and Takara Fuji has three demotion ranks, but it's only one, two for him to get out, so he's minus one. So we've got 6.5 plus 5.5 plus two plus one, and then the last one half. That equals 15 and a half unused demotion ranks. We have the 67 from before, we take away the 15.5, and that equals 51.5. This is still a pretty high number, but we've got further to go. If anyone retired out of the division in mid-tournament, we would take that into consideration, but that doesn't apply to anybody, so we skip that step. After that, we look at does the size of the Sanyaku change, or are we expecting it to change? Well, we already know that Kotonowaka is going to be promoted to Ozeki. So we're gonna have Kotonowaka, this is not placement, uh, this is just to fill in the gap. So we've got five guys in this space, and we still have to fit in four guys at Sekiwaki and Komusubi. So right now, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight but it's gonna go up to nine it has to go up to nine so when the Sanyaku gets bigger by one we add a number of ranks equal to the number of ranks on the Banzuke because there's 34 guys here all moving up half a rank that means we have to add another 17. we take our 51 and a half from before add the 17 and now we have 68.5 and the last thing, and I'm just gonna ask you to take my word for it, I'm not gonna put a graphic up, is the record of guys in Jurio versus guys in Makauchi when there's a cross-divisional match because there's an odd number of active guys in the top division. If the Jurio guys win more, that means there's more losses on Makauchi guys than wins, which drags them down as a whole even further. If the Makauchi guys have more wins, then there's more wins coming into the division than losses, so that would take away from these unused promotion ranks. Well, the Jurio versus Makauchi record in this tournament was Jurio guys four and Makauchi guys only one. So that's three, which means we're adding three to this number. And that leaves us with a grand total of 71 and a half unused promotion ranks. For comparison's sake, in March, which was the Basho where Matakiyumi from Maegashira 3 was 4 and 11 and only dropped 3 and a half ranks, and Kota Shoho at Maegashira 5 was 6 and 9 and only dropped a half a rank, that Basho only had 34.5 unused promotion ranks. Now, that was heavily skewed towards the top, which is why we had kind of bonkers movement in that area. It was more normal through the rest of the Banzuke. The biggest number we've had in the past year was in May, where we had a total of 50 ranks. And here's the thing with that, the Sanyaku actually shrank going from May into July. So the records were wild and it looked like the movement was gonna be super crazy, but because everybody's movement got a little bit depressed by the shrinking of the Sanyaku, keep in mind, like I said, if the Sanyaku gets bigger, everyone at Maegashira goes up half a rank, but if it gets smaller, they all go down half a rank. So without that, it would have been like plus 66 or 66 and a half, something like that, which is pretty close to what we have here. So since our 71.5 is in part due to Kotonowaka going up, 
and that's going to drag everybody else up it means overall we're going to see a lot of bonus movement be it over promotion or under demotion but it's not by itself going to lead to any particular guy getting a huge jump but we are going to see some pretty significant bumps because there's just so many gaps to fill overall so with that out of the way let's get into the actual bonzuke movement we're starting here with the math and we'll point to the top guys first because that's easy terna fuji yokozuna stays in place you'll notice that the ozeki who are already there kirishima hoshoryu and takakesho are put in order by their records from last basho Kotonowaka, despite his 13 and 2, he's the new guy, he goes to the back of the line. Similarly, Daisho bumps over from Sekiwaki 1 West to Sekiwaki 1 East, because that spot's now open, and he is the only incumbent Sekiwaki to stay at the rank. Wakamoto Haru, we've, I've already put him up for Magashir 1 because he's the only option. He'll be Sekiwaki 1 West because he's the new guy at the rank. It doesn't matter that he was already there, he's moving up into it, he goes to the back of the line. Now the first move is very simple. Abi's gonna go to Komusubi 1 East, he's the only option, he had a winning record, he's a mile ahead of anyone else who's even an option here, so let's just go ahead and get him there, get him out of the way. And the next guy in line is Aura, our favorite pinky boy. However, he's coming down from Komusubi 1 West with a losing record, and especially at 6 and 9, he is not gonna stay there. They will not leave him there even though mathematically he's the next one in line it's going to be Asanayama or Nishikigi. So which one is it? They're mathematically tied, and even though Nishikigi was a higher rank, he didn't have a much tougher record, but it doesn't matter. Nishikigi should almost certainly get moved to Komusubi 1 West. He did fight the Yokozuna, he was at the edge of the joy, and moving a guy from Maegashira 7 to Komusubi just looks weird. Even though from Maegashira 5 at 8 and 7 to Komusubi is a hell of a jump, they can point to that and say, look, we didn't have any other options. He was the really the only guy that we could do that for. They don't have to do it for Asanoyama. It would look funky. They're going to give it to Nishikigi. I am 98% sure of this. And Asanoyama, because those two guys are tied and have winning records, I'm putting Asanoyama at Maegashira 1 East. But if I'm being honest, I am not 100% sold on this being correct. Ura is the next guy in line, he can go up to Maegashira 1 West, that's okay. Atami Fuji is going to end up at Maegashira 2 East. He's only going to get a half ranked demotion on 6 and 9, but there's just nobody else to go there. Tobi Zaru is only going to end up at Maegashira 4 East. He can't be promoted at 7 and 8, but he's so far ahead of everyone else within range, he just won't be demoted either. Atami Fuji is the, really the only guy who can go there. They're not going to put Meisei or Oho ahead of him. That would be completely bananas. But the Ura Asanayama question remains in play. This gets directly into what I was talking about with people who look up this stuff and try to figure out based on history what's going to happen. Well, no Komusubi at 6 and 9 has ever been demoted less than to Magashira 1 West. That's the highest they've ever ended up. I'm sticking with that for now. I put in my entry, this is what is on it, and I'm sticking with it solely for the reason that Asanayama and Nishikigi both had winning records. But mathematically, Ura was ahead of both of them, so I am not at all sold that what I have here is correct. If you're against the Banzuki player, this is one of those questions that if you get it wrong, at least you'll still get points off of it. Whereas, if somehow I'm wrong about Nishikigi and Asanayama, then that's going to be zero points if you get those wrong. But I would not be the least bit surprised if Ura ends up at Maegashira 1 East. Consider Wakamoto Haru was 6 and 9 at Sekiwake. Now going down two ranks to Maegashira 1 West, which is where I thought they were going to put him, and one and a half ranks to Maegashira 1 East, both of those are totally normal for a 6 and 9 record. One rank versus a half rank is a lot different at 6 and 9. But if ever there was going to be an instance where they would just drop that Komasubi a half rank on 6 and 9, this would be it. I don't think there's a wrong answer here. I am entirely split on this, and I may very easily enter again and just flip-flop these two guys. I'm not sure yet. Just be aware that Asanoyama and Aura at either Magashira 1 slot does make sense, does have a rationale, and do your best. Uh, use whatever logic you think makes the most sense. I don't think you can be faulted for going either way with this one. Now what do we do with Meisei and Oho? They're tied. They were both fairly low ranked, and the committee has had a tendency to give the better record the advantage on things like this of late. But I just don't think it's going to happen. 
here's the thing. As I've done this more and more, I've come to realize that there are certain guys and certain situations where they're going to look at it and it's just more likely they're going to say, no, we're, we're not giving you a bump up. We're not giving you an advantage. We're not doing you any favors. Go prove you're good enough to, to be at this rank. And Oho seems like one of those guys. So Macy is a proven Lo Sanyaku Joy level guy. Oho has not shown the capacity to be any good at this at these ranks at all. He's never even been at this rank. He's never even been close. When he got up to Migashira 6, he got absolutely smoked. They're left without much in the way of options. They got to put him pretty far up. But in this case, it's just hard to see them pushing Meisei behind Oho when Meisei is proven and Oho is not. I say all the time that that kind of thing shouldn't come into play when they make these decisions. But the truth is, they got to make a decision based on something. And if they're not going to stick too hard, record over initial rank and that's absolutely one of the things they will not do 100 percent of the time i think they're going to give it to the proven guy so we're going to move mese to magashira 2 west and oho 2 3 east and now we've got another tie we've got midori fuji kinbozan and takano show kinbozan is easy we've got all these gaps ahead of these guys but kinbozan can only go to magashira 6 east because he was seven and eight so they'll just stick him there that's fine Midori, Fuji, and Takano Show. This comes back to the question of, do they give preference to the guy who is in the joy or to the guy who is further down? If you are a regular watcher of these videos, you may remember that not that long ago, I assumed that they were going to give the joy preference because they had been doing that even as they had been shifting how they make these decisions, they had been giving the guys who were in the joy preference over the guys who were coming up from the lower ranks, and then they absolutely flip-flop that in a four-way tie situation and had it just go by record. So I cannot say with 100% surety what's going to happen here. But in this case, given the size of the promotion that Takano Show is going to get regardless, I think Midori Fuji ends up at 3 West. It's only a one and a half ranked emotion on 5 and 10, but one and a half ranks on 5 and 10 is a thing that's happened before. Then they're going to get split around Tobizaru because they're not going to bump Tobizaru down just to keep these guys together. That would be completely unfair to Toby. That would be doing him super dirty. And I realize that the Takano Show arrow is kind of pointing at 3 West as well, but you know, whatever. What this comes down to is I can see more reasons why they would put Midori Fuji at 3 West than reasons why they would put Takano Show at 3 West. Now for you guys, the Banzaki players, this is another situation where they could do either thing, but if you get it wrong, you get zero points, and if you get it right, you get four. So like, this decision is huge. Four or zero. The Meisei Oho decision is four or zero. Like, in terms of how you do on Guess the Banzake, these are huge. You have to get these right. But how do you get them right? You go with your best guess, you see, you try to figure out what logic makes the most sense, and then you just hope that you can read the minds of the people who are sitting in the room drinking beer and deciding the fates of all of these athletes. It's fun! Next, Hiro Umi is by himself and blessedly gives us an easy decision by putting him at Maegashira 5 East. Then, Kinbozan is going to split up Gonoyama and Surugisho, so we just have to figure out which one of these two guys is going to end up at 5 West and which one at 6 West. And I'm going to blend how I made the decision between Meisei and Oho, and how I made the decision between Midori Fuji and Takano Sho. 1. Gonoyama was in the joy, and 2. Surugisho, regardless of where he goes, is going to be at a career high rank. Gonoyama, even though he did poorly, we know he can at least basically compete at this level, so it makes a lot more sense to keep him here, and then drop Surugisho in at 6 West, see how he does, don't just throw him at the edge of the joy and maybe watch him get 100% clowned, at least give him a fighting chance. There's also another reason for this decision. We'll clear those arrows, and if Hirata Umi, if they decide to do something really goofy, they're like, oh, Hirata Umi, going to 5 West is fine, and then Gonoyama just goes down two ranks with his 5 and 10, I do not think they're going to do this. Let me be real clear about that. But if they do, they're definitely going to put Surugisho at 6 West. So putting him at 6 West, even when we assume Kirito Umi is going to be at 5 East, is kind of like a safety valve. If you put him at 5 West, you're going all in on Hirata Umi being at 5 East, and there's still that kind of 5-10% to 10 chance they end up not doing that. 
So Surugisho to six west is definitely the safer play. It's the one I suggest is the one I'm going with. And with that said, let's put these guys into position. Oh, wonderful. We've got Onosato by himself, Tamawashi by himself, Onosho by himself. We're just going to bump him up, right? Well, what about Papa Bear and Captain Faceplant? These guys are in positions where frequently they will be given a less significant demotion if there's a way to do it that makes sense. For Takeyasu especially at Komasubi 1 East, look at all these gaps here. Onosato, Tamawashi, and Onosho, mathematically, there's still three gaps ahead of all of them. So why not put Takeyasu in one of those spots? It makes all the sense in the world, and it's genuinely hard to believe, even though they've been doing things a little bit differently over the last year, that they're not going to take advantage of this and just drop him in at Magashira 7. It seems to be where he just ends up. He keeps landing at Magashira 7 when he gets hurt. I don't understand. Whatever. Now, Hokuto Fuji, yeah, he had his four wins and his Kyujos at Magashira 3. I don't think they would feel as compelled to move him ahead of those three guys. However, I do think that when they move Takeyasu up and Hokuto Fuji was in a very similar situation, he's in the joy, he got hurt, not that that should or does necessarily come into consideration, but they're so close to each other and Hokuto Fuji is mathematically a half a rank ahead of Takeyasu. I think they'll have Takeyasu ahead, but I don't think they're going to make Hokuto Fuji flounder a couple ranks behind him in this situation. So in this case, I think what they do for Takeyasu is going to benefit Hokuto Fuji by extension. Let's move those guys into place. Kaboom! The only reason I can see them doing something different is because, again, over the last year, their methods seem to have changed somewhat, but they haven't changed in every way at all times, and this one fits so well, I have a hard time seeing them not do this. Just be aware that if you're a guest the Banzaki player, that where these guys go is probably going to be where a lot of people not just win or lose the whole competition, but end up finishing in the top 20% or the bottom 40%. Like this is gonna be a huge swing if you get this right or wrong. But this is what I'm banking on. This is what's in my entry and I, this part I'm not changing. I'm pretty confident in this. If they do something else, well, so be it, I'll live with it. And now we get a little bit of an easy mode. We've got Onosato, Tamawashi, and Onisho, but also Kota Shoho and Shodai. All of them can just get bumped up. Four of them have winning records over promotions are fine. And Shodai is not going to get anything like an out of line under demotion. So let's just slide them all up. Kabing, kaboom, kabam. Everything looks good. Onosato, Tamawashi, Onosho, they all get a half rank of over promotion. Kota Shoho, one and a half ranks over promotion. Shodai, one and a half ranks of under demotion. All of that looks good. All of that is about as normal as a Banzuke gets. So cool. We're running with that. Now we have a couple of ties that we need to think about. Who gets preference between Ichiyamamoto and Mitakeyumi, and who gets preference between Shonen Umi and Sada no Umi? This one's different from the questions before because in these cases, none of these guys were in the joy, none of these guys had uh, Sanyaku opponents. They're all likely to be treated about equally. But equally means that these are very 50-50 decisions. So I'll show you what I ended up picking. I put the guys with the better records ahead of the guys with the worst records, but who were fighting at a higher rank. So let me explain my thinking. Usually I go as mathematical as possible. I try to keep it as close to the numbers as possible. And I try to look at history. I try to look at, you know, whatever evidence I can find for making one decision over another. But in this case, what I'm looking at is Shona Naomi has been around this rank a few times, but he hasn't really succeeded. Ichi Yamamoto, does not do well at these ranks. He was Magashira 8 a little while back, and he got smacked. He's Magashira 7, he got smacked. Matakeyumi, I mean, we know he's not going to be a joy-level wrestler, again, barring like a medical miracle, and Sada no Umi was for a little bit, but now he's slipped and he's gone back to where he was for most of his Makauchi career. But, and this is getting into some real mental weeds, but I may be way off, but, you know, stick with me here. I just think these guys are going to get on a roll, showing a preference to those who have proven themselves at a higher rank, and they're going to prefer Matakiumi and Sada no Umi partly on that basis. This is the part of the Bonzuke where they're just like, dude, whatever, man, like, just put somebody somewhere, it doesn't matter. And what sucks for the guests of the Bonzuke players is that these are both situations which are four or zero points four or zero points. In fact, even though it looks like they should go with Matakeyumi and Sada no Umi, or 
with Ichi Yamamoto and Shonen Umi, I wouldn't be the least bit surprised if they do one of those and then flip-flop for the other because there's a bunch of people who want to do it one way, a bunch who want to do it the other way, and then they compromise by just making that more screwy decision. But this is what I've got. There's genuinely not a wrong answer before we see the Bonzike. All the options here are logical. Just do your best and cross your fingers. And now we have a four-way tie. Well, except we don't because we're going to forget about Nishiki Fuji for the moment. We've got Ryudin, we've got Chorin Umi, we've got Shimizu Umi. Now, not that long ago, maybe a year ago, I would have assumed that at 3 and 12, they were not going to give Ryudin the full demotion, so he would just go to Magashira 12 West, and then they would line the other guys up, however. When you look at what they did to Onisho last time, though, remember, poor Onisho, I mean, I don't know about poor Onisho, he ended up going 10 and 5, but remember, he was 5 East, and he was 3 and 12. He was exactly the same rank record combination as Ryudin is now, and he went down nine and a half ranks. They over demoted him. This was where all the guests of the Bonzake stuff ended up going wrong for everybody, if nothing else. Nobody expected that, especially because he got over demoted to move Kota Shoho up a little bit further coming in from Jurio. So there's nothing sacred about the 3 and 12 guy from Magashira 5. And having just seen them do that to Onisho, I would have to have a reason to think that they would do something different for Ryudin, and I don't. So the easiest thing to do, the most sensible thing to do, is to just move Ryudin to the back of this line. If we do that, Shuren Umi cannot go above Maegashira 13, because he was 7 and 8 at that rank, which automatically puts Shimizu Umi ahead of both of them. And, given that they have seemed to prefer those winning records a little bit more lately, that makes a lot of sense. So let's put those in place, and now we just have to figure out what to do with and around the Jurio guys. Nishiki Fuji is already in place. Kitana Waka will get bumped up to 14 West. That's easy. So there's something else I was thinking about. Since Takeru Fuji is coming up from Jurio 10 East, would they move Dayamami and Roga ahead of him? And the answer, I think, is this. They would if this was a situation where they had earned their way into a higher rank. So when Hakuoho was promoted, mathematically he was ahead of Bushozan. But Bushozan was 10 and 5 at Jurio 3. So he had earned his way a little further into the division, and they put him ahead of Hakuoho. In this case, Dayamami and Roga have barely scraped their way into the division. So I don't think Takeru Fuji is going to get put behind them. I think they're going to stay in this order. Mio Giryu isn't going to go anywhere because he's mathematically still in the division. And Endo, because these other Jurio guys didn't mathematically get into Makauchi, Endo should be the one to get saved. He's ahead of all the other guys being demoted. So even though you've got like... Hokuseiho only had two wins, and that might be the kind of record where, okay, we're going to save him. No, they're not going to do that. I would be completely blown away if they did something like that. Endo should be the one who gets saved, and because they have routinely, over the last year, made the guys being demoted within Makauchi eat as full a demotion as possible, and they allow the Jurio guys to get ahead of them, I think that's going to happen again. Essentially, what they used to do, it looked like, was they would move the Jurio guys into the division, but they would do it in such a way that the Makauchi guys like, oh, you're already here, so we're going to give you a little bit of padding, and okay, you Jurio guys who just got here, you're going to need to fight and prove you deserve to stay. It seems like that has flipped. Now it looks like what they're doing is, all right, we're going to move the Jurio guys in, and if there's Makauchi guys who should go behind them, we're going to make them prove that they deserve to stay. So with that idea in mind, we move Mio Giryu and Endo behind the Jurio promotees, and we end up with this. And that is a completed Bonzuke prediction. Like I said, I've put in my entry, this is what I have. I might redo Asano Yama and Ura, but I'm pretty comfortable with everything else. But what do you think? What differences do you have in your entry? Are you still thinking about entering? Put that in the comments and I'll try to convince you to do it. Like I said, all the links for joining the Guest the Bonzuke competition will be in the description. I'd love for you to join, it's a lot of fun and it's a great way to have a reason to learn how all of these systems work. So questions, thoughts, theories, throw them in the comments. The breakdown poll had almost 250 votes, which I really appreciate, thank you guys for that. Kotonowaka was the clear leader, so that breakdown is in progress, I am working on that. Well, not as we speak, obviously I'm recording this, but I will be getting back to that shortly. Other than that, I got nothing else, so have a great day and I will see you soon.